this is a particle m a is incident on a particle b and and after reaction so we will we'll get m x m y and let, let them move, move with a kinetic energy say k x and k y there, there some reaction occur this this is initially at rest this is incident particle <coughs> reaction occurs here then how to calculate the energy relief and what all that energy relief will be kinetic energy of fragments so these are the fragments or you can say daughter this will be parent now what about energy relief here so first we are so th th this particular lhs what we can call parent so they are having a mass and the rhs and all these masses will be given in terms of a mu for you so how to calculate the kinetic energy relief means q is equal to mass of parent this will be ma c square mb c square minus mass of daughter mx c square plus m y c square uh, m a and m b will be given m x m a m y a, a, a m a m b m x m y will be given in a mu and what is one a mu we know 9 uh, i think value 931.47 mega electron volt by c square what all you get that energy will be in terms of mega electron volt if you want in joule then what you can do e equal to in some of the experiments we need like this huh? like this we can calculate this and what is q year of torts q is a symbol energy this energy release what will happen this energy release what will happen will be converted into kinetic energy of fragments here so what is q we can write initially let's that this this will capture this particle let's assume that one so this q will be now kx plus ky or or no no sir how do you can say if this is having kinetic energy let's assume that then you should consider the overall energy mass this is something related to mass so we write equation ka plus energy supplied should be equal to kx plus ky what is q q has come due to mass no so therefore what and what are k kxy this is the kinetic energy of fragments no? because see when when we enter alpha beta decay rather than that alpha beta decay we are more interested in this physics way of thinking the problem that's why in the beginning i'm introducing what is k this is the kinetic energy of incident particle. From where does Q has come? Due to difference in mass. So when Q will be positive, when mass of parents more than that of daughter, so energy will be released. So initial kinetic energy is there plus energy released. That that will be converted into kinetic energy of fragment. Fragments I'll call or kinetic energy of fragments or daughter. It's left to you anything. Is a nuclear fission something? No, we'll call that as fragments. Here, yeah, reaction, no, we're calling parent and there's a daughter. I agree. This, this is the one thing. No. So, shall we? Uh, one, one first conclusion. Shall we make it? Uh, energy and energy. Is released in a nuclear reaction. The first case when mass of parent is greater than that of daughter. So MA plus MB must be greater than MX plus MY. I think that's what I did know here. There no the Q has 
Q has become positive. This is the thing. So if the information of the reactions, if the information is available in terms of mass, you have to search for this. Is it mass of parent greater than mass of daughter? No. Instead of this, sometimes what happens, we will get information of binding energy. Energy is in equation when binding energy of daughter is greater than that of parent. Binding energy will be different here. It should be like this. Binding energy of daughter, if it is greater than that of parent, energy will be released. Binding energy or binding energy per nucleon. Either way, I think these are the two very uh, things is what I, I'm stressing here. No? So if they give information of binding energy, okay, take help of that one. If binding energy per nucleon, if they have, then from binding energy per nucleon, you'll get binding energy and check the binding energy of daughter if it is greater than that of the parent, energy will be released. Or mass of parent is greater than that of daughter, will be released. Most of the 80% of numericals, masses will be known. In very few circumstances or where they give binding energy. In that case, okay, we take help of the second situation. This is the overall generalized conclusion. Uh, sir, is it an add-on or two-dimensional collision? I think he will mention, we can't say, because already I think in um, atomic physics, you have come across where the collision can be add-on or two-dimensional. Sir, it, it all depends upon the situation there. It means like when you pass a neutron beam, neutron particles through a hydrogen gas filled up in a container, in a, in a gas tube, hydrogen gas container, then Few hydrogen mole, few hydrogen will atoms will undergo add on, few will undergo two dimension. It all depends upon the conditions, no? And we can't say that it must happen like this. What happens only you can notice here. Hmm? Th those are the limitations of classical physics, what you can put it. Okay, now after having this general idea, then uh, Suppose say like a, what is the minimum energy needed for the reaction to occur? Suppose if Q negative, what to do? Q positive, okay, fine. If Q positive, okay, fine. If Q is negative, what to do? Then I must supply energy for the reaction to occur. I must supply energy to reaction occur. So based on the Q, now, what happened? now we have two types of reaction. What are that? Exothermic and endothermic reactions. Uh, that I think I, I, I'll focus on later part because most of the problems what we do is Q positive. Tomorrow I'll focus on that one. Types of further exothermic, endothermic. And now we'll directly it has come to.